Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Scottish Summit 2021. My name is Michelle Mombeshora, and I will be taking you through uh, D365 Project Operations, which is a Microsoft product offering, um, relatively new. And I will be talking about what it means for D365 Finance and Operations. But before we actually get into our topic for today, I want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors. So uh, Script Runner, DQ Global, Proximo, Redspire, Agilisys, Hitachi Solutions. Thank you so much for making this event possible. A big thanks to Mark and Ian, as well as all the other people uh, from the Scottish Summit who've been behind all of the hard work to make this event possible. A big thank you to you. I will now tell you a little bit about myself before I go into my actual uh, presentation for today. So as I said earlier, my name is Michelle Mumbishora. I am from Zimbabwe. I actually enjoy traveling, wildlife safaris. That explains why you can see the snippets of the Victoria Falls, which is where I come from, um, and a map in terms of uh, Zimbabwe there and a little bit of wildlife there so you can see the beautiful sunset so that just sums up me in terms of my professional journey i am a d365 finance solution architect at hcl power objects i've got a background in accounting so did my acca but decided not to follow it through because yep i think it just wasn't for me jumped ship went on the technology front and i've never looked back since then so i've worked on multiple uh, ERP implementations across different industries and really enjoy that kind of work. Um, and for your own information, myself and two other lovely ladies from the community, Julia and Kayla, we have started a D365 user group. We would really love for you to join. So please do look out for our updates. So if you do have any questions around our user group and uh, this session, I have added my LinkedIn and Twitter details here. So please do reach out and connect. On a last note, this is actually my first time speaking at such an event. So please go easy on me and bear with me. So let's get into our agenda for today. So what we will be looking at is we will be talking about uh, project operations, what it means from an overview perspective. So I'll be talking, taking you through the key features of project operations. So giving you a little bit of an insight into this um, new product. And what we will also touch on is the deployment options. So with this product comes a couple of options in terms of deployment. Why this is key is so that you start to see what each and every one of them mean and how it applies to your existing implementations or your customers and those who are probably looking uh, to uh, roll out project operations. So I am basing my presentation on one of the deployment options, which is a, a, a option that is across two platforms. So I will take you through what's available and what's not available. And um, with reference to what we've known in terms of classic PMA. And this also helps give people who are more from a CE perspective or PSA perspective, just to get an insight into what actually happens from a finance and operations side. We will do a very high level um, go into the system demo. So this is just to get a feel in terms of a couple of the key features that I will have highlighted. So it's nothing end to end, but it's just to give you a feel of what it looks like and what you can do. Then lastly, I will give you an insight into a few key considerations. I'm currently in the middle of a, a D365 project operations implementation myself. So I will give a few key considerations, particularly around the deployment uh, option that's across CE and FNO. So now let's go into what project operations is. So this is an end to end project management system which connects your sales resourcing project man project management teams in a single application. It unifies operations and connects teams in a single integrated offering. So I want to highlight on that integrated because that's one of the benefits of this, particularly if we are going with the deployment option against um, which is across the two platforms. So it also provides the visibility and insight across the life cycle. But um, even better, this product is 
taken the best features from three applications. So let me tell you which ones they are. These are existing um, Microsoft applications. So what we're getting is the best from PSA. So this is around the sales capabilities, the quotation, the resourcing, that's all gone into project operations. We've also getting the best from Microsoft projects. So this is all around the planning capabilities and that solutioning is all coming into D365 um, project operations. What we're also getting is all the good features from D365 finance and operations. And what that means is the capabilities around project management, costing and accounting, all of that is embedded in project operations. So to top it up, Microsoft have gone and done some enhancements to the planning capabilities as well as the scheduling. So they've applied some intelligence to it. So it, it, it you know, to top it up, you know, it, it really gets better because components of uh, project operations are built on Dataverse. So therefore making it customizable and extendable across Power Platform. So be it a custom application built with Power Apps or BI reporting, the capabilities are there. So such a good product, um, in my opinion. Um, great job for Microsoft, I must say. Um, so now let's, let's get into these deployment options. So as I'm talking about it, I'm saying that this uh, project operations comes with a couple of deployment options. Let's give you that understanding in terms of what they mean. So from a customer engagement deployment option, so there is three um, options here. So the first one, let's talk about the customer engagement uh, deployment option. So this is a light deployment. So it covers the life cycle from a deal to performer invoicing. So it is leverages off the front end capabilities within the customer engagement front. In terms of who it's suitable for, I would say any existing of your customers that are on PSA, this would be a, a PSA only that is, this would be a good deployment option for them. The reason why I'm, I'm talking about existing is because Microsoft will continue to support uh, customers on existing PSA, I believe up till 2024. I might be wrong, but I think that's what um, um, they have said. So they will not be adding any new functionality around this. So be mindful. And if it's new customers, you know, so you would be looking at those who probably um, want to uh, have, uh, you know, uh, all the front end capabilities within customer engagement, but probably integrating to a third end, um, a third party ERP system. So that's a suitable option for them. Now let's look into the next one. So this is for project management and accounting deployment. So this one I would say is like the one that's closest to a classic PMA. So this is more suited for project operations for stocked and production order scenarios. So any of your customers with warehouse inventory manufacturing, um, needs requirements or in those industries, this one is the deployment option for them. So it also leverages on PMA capabilities. And please bear in mind or make note that there is no integration to customer engagement with this deployment option. Now, my favorite of all of them, and obviously this is, you know, scenarios are different, but I'm currently working on a full deployment. So I'm actually enjoying the capabilities around this is the full deployment. So this one is more suited towards resource based where uh, someone doesn't have, you know, stopped scenarios. Uh, it's not suited for inventory, warehousing, manufacturing, and you, you, it would be more suited to your existing PSA and FNO customers, uh, as in those who have PSA integrated to FNO. So this would be ideal because it leverages off the capabilities across both platforms. Now to give an insight into capabilities for all of these uh, uh, deployment options, let me take you through uh, the capabilities. So what we've got is we've got the resource based, which is uh, really uh, the one that's leveraging on customer engagement. So this green highlights what's available on the customer engagement front. So this is purely the light one, which is only on the customer engagement side. So you leverage, so in terms of capabilities, you get the whole sales process for project that extends uh, the D365 sales application experience. You get your project planning, you get your multi-dimensional pricing. Uh, there's the element of resource management there, time tracking, uh, basic ex expense entry and performer invoice um, or customer facing invoicing. So still a rich product, you're still able to get all of this with it. So again, it's just about your client's needs, right? 
So let's go get on to the next deployment option. So this one is the one which I view as a classic PMA. So the blue, by the way, is what is available in uh, finance and operations. So this is our like uh, project management accounting deployment. So this is more suited towards inventory based scenarios. So in terms of the capabilities, you would still be getting all uh, that we probably have in classic PMA. So when you think of your uh, work breakdown structure, resource management, time tracking. Um, there's a lot of new capabilities around expense management. So you'd be getting that whole experience of full expense, receipt OCR, full invoicing, um, and obviously the powerful revenue recognition engine. Uh, to top it up, this one would support production orders as well as material support. So lastly, it's the resource-based scenarios, which is our full deployment, which is the one which is our focus for today's session. So with this one, you still get all the good capabilities as well. But what I like is, you know, as I said, the green is the customer engagement, the blue is the finance and operations. You are getting the both uh, uh, capabilities across both fronts. So, um, you know, in terms of our sales, uh, it's, you know, you get all of that capabilities around that project planning using Microsoft Project for Web, multi-dimensional pricing, unified resource management, time tracking, basic expense, full expense, receipt OCR, performer and customer facing invoices, revenue recognition, while the list is endless. So you're getting all those capabilities with this deployment um, option. So I really like that. And what we are going to do is go onto our next slide, which now starts to actually focus on the full deployment um, option. So let's go into this because this is what brings out what's available from a full deployment option. So I like how it goes across uh, the different features in terms of sales, project planning, resourcing, project execution, invoicing and revenue recognition. But also what's quite clear here is that split. So you can see that certain capabilities, which we are typically operational processes, they all sit on the customer engagement side. Then when you look at the bottom part, which is the ones that are in um, like pinkish color, those are on the finance and operations side. So those I would actually say these are more our back office and they're more suited towards when it comes to role based, because I would say this is kind of structuring this more role based. This is more suited towards our project accountants, our finance team, so anyone doing this back office. Then when you look at the top part, the top half, which is your operational. So this is your uh, sales managers, your project managers. So those are the kind of roles already. So there's that segregation of the roles. So now let's just start to talk about key processes around this. Let's look at the leads and opportunity and quotations. So this uh, capability is mastered in um, customer engagement with this deployment option. So we don't actually see visibility of this in on the finance and operational side. So that's an, an interesting change. Um, when it comes to project contracts and projects, so they are mastered in customer engagement, but we do get visibility of this from a finance and operational side. So I will touch a little bit more um, on my slides downstream in terms of what we can actually do, but it's, we can't create, but we can view. When it comes to milestones, um, this is now under project planning. So when it comes to milestones, milestones uh, play a key role in terms of our on account as well as uh, in terms of our estimate projects. So again, they're mastered on the customer engagement side. What we get from a finance and operations side is viewing the on account or actually seeing an estimate created at the back of that um, milestone that's created. When it comes to project tasks, project tasks, I almost wanna compare them to what we had in classic PMA um, work breakdown structure, but it's not quite fair. Um, these project tasks, are not really, um, so they are integrated as an attribute, a transactional attribute on the FNO side. But apart from that, you know, I wouldn't say they're um, of much significance, probably for reporting, yes. Whereas our expense estimates and our resource assignments, they play a crucial role when it comes to finance and operations, because this is what drives our forecast. So again, we don't have that ability to create any of that from an FNO perspective, because that's mastered on the customer engagement. So resources are uh, as well housed on the customer engagement side. It's pos possibly the roles that uh, flow through to the FNO side. Um, when it comes to time entry, 
uh, they are mastered on customer engagement side. So what we get is they feed into, once they are approved, they feed into what we call our project actuals. What's interesting though is expense entries. Expense entries are mastered on the finance and operations side. They actually then feed through into the customer engagement side. And with, with time entries, once they get approved, they form what we call our project actuals. So project actuals is quite interesting because this is what gets integrated into FNO. And we then start to get visibility of that on the integration journal. So on that integration journal, this is where we actually start to see the transactional parts coming from customer engagement. So there's a little bit of stuff that we can do when it comes to the integration journal, which we'll discuss a little bit later on. But once that journal is posted, this is what posts into our project sub ledger and subsequently our general ledger. So this is, you know, uh, just to emphasize that we can't actually create any of these. Most of them are really mastered from a customer engagement side. So we just are able to view what comes across. So when it comes to invoicing as well, the invoicing journey uh, and creating these, what we call performer invoices, that is driven from customer engagement. So someone would look at, uh, you know, time, say if it was a time and material, they would look at um, a mark certain uh, transactions ready for invoicing. And uh, those in these sense, once they get confirmed, they, they come onto our performer invoicing. Similarly with milestones, and they're just pushed across into FNO where we're able to view invoice proposals. And then once posted, they, that's our invoice journals, which feeds into our ledgers as well. So what glues everything together? What pieces all of this is this? Dual rights. So that's really important. So this is the integration piece that is all happening in the background. So if you've probably you've had any implementations around PSA, maybe to FNO, there would always be that worry in terms of, well, we need to get the integration piece right. Well, with project operations, Microsoft is taking care of that for us. So that's a good thing. So I just want you to be aware that in, in terms of my uh, session for today is focusing more on the finance and operations side, but for your own information, there is actually a session that's taking place on Saturday at 4 p.m. So Antti and Aurelian will be presenting on, um, you know, a session called Welcome to Project Operations, and that's going to focus on the top half of this what actually happens from a customer engagement side. So please look out for it and attend because it's nice to get you know, both sides of the story. So let's go into our next slide, which just takes us through what is dual rights. So dual rights is, this for me is the link for CE and FNL, and this is key. So one thing I would say to you as in, in, a, in my journey so far in terms of um, getting this right is read the configuration document that Microsoft has given to us because you need to get it right. So this has to be done on the common data service before anything is configured on the customer engagement side. Because now there's a, a, a concept that's been introduced of a, a company in customer engagement, and that uh, needs to really be mastered from a finance and operation in terms of setting up that legal entity. Once that's enabled correctly, that's when you're able to see this customers in customer engagement. And these are like, it's, it's, it's an attribute that's required for many um, entities on the customer engagement side. So my recommendation here is actually follow the configuration guide, ensure that all the related maps are running because if they're not, you know, this might cause um, some issues downstream. So let's just talk about what this will do. So we'll get that real time, we get that bi-directional integration of data between D365 FNO and Dataverse. So this is for documents, that's for master data and reference data. So for me, this is the power, it glues everything together and it just happens in the background. So there's not much that we need to do. It's fantastic, that's a tick box for me. So let's go into our project contracts. So when it comes to project contracts and projects, we are probably used from an FNO or classic PMA where we actually able to create this from a finance and operations side, create project contracts, create projects. Well, now we don't have that capability. So they're all uh, project contracts and projects are mastered on the customer engagement side. And it's one way to finance an operation. So when it comes to a project contract customer, which equates to what um, is our funding source, we've got visibility of this from a finance and operations side. 
But when it comes to actually saying, you know, determining the split, so if you've got multiple funding sources, that is mastered on the customer engagement side. So be mindful of what you can do and what you cannot do. So when it comes to contracts, again, the creation of this is from the customer engagement side. From an FNO, we can view, we can, you know, um, apply some attributes to the contract and the project itself, but that's the most that we can do. Um, and when it comes to the project contract lines, so this translates to our project uh, contract line, which, you know, is against the billing rule. So the ones that are covered is time and material and fixed price. So while we're on these types of projects anyways, um, there's only three types that are covered, which is uh, fixed price, which is your milestone, uh, time and material, and internal. Internal is just where uh, it's also mastered in customer engagement, where that project is created and it's not linked to a contract that translates to an internal project. So be mindful that uh, all of this are housed on the customer engagement side and we're not actually able to create them. But what we can actually do is we can default financial dimensions against the customer, we can default it against the project contract or the project uh, itself. So this is mastered in finance and operation. And when it comes to sales tax, sales tax is also mastered on the finance and operation side. So what else around project contracts or project are we using? So you might remember we had project hierarchies or sub projects in classic PMA. Well, with this deployment option, we don't have any abilities of creating this. So that's gone, unfortunately. So when it comes to uh, project budgets, we could create budgets against um, you know, our projects. We don't have that capability, but remember we touched on the forecast. So we do, we're able to forecast. So that capability is there, but that's also mastered on the customer engagement side. So another one to be mindful about is uh, maybe on types of projects where we previously could create investment projects where we could capitalize. We don't have that, those capabilities anymore. And another important one, which be mindful of is there is no P2P integration at this point to projects. So these are things that just bear in mind and you know, consider that you don't have them available anymore with uh, this deployment option. And, and, and possibly if there are things that your client needs, you may look to enhancements, but I would say just watch out, uh, always keep an eye on Microsoft's roadmap because these are things that may be coming um, soon. So let's also get into what we call transaction categories. So this is what glues a lot of stuff together. I mean, there's a lot of key considerations around this when it comes to your gold builds. Uh, but what I just want to um, emphasize here is these get mastered on the customer engagement side. So when they're mastered on the customer engagement side, what they in turn um, create is our transaction categories on the FNO side. So again, it's a one way. And when they do that, it automatically creates what we call our shared categories. And I think in classic PMA, you're probably used to this. So it will automatically create expense type, fee, hour, and item for us. So that's brilliant. But what we will now need to do from a finance and operations side is we will actually need to manually go and set up our project categories. So it's almost picking to say, right, for this type of application, we've got expense type, we've got fee, we've got hours, but for this specific legal entity, I only want to set up expense or hour. So you then decide which ones, but they have to be actually at the base. The origin needs to be from the transaction category. So be mindful of that. Let's talk about actuals and the integration journal. So this is what glues everything in terms of our transactions. So as I mentioned, time is all mastered on the customer engagement side expense. Yes, it might be from um, finance and operations, but that feeds onto the customer engagement side and in turn goes into our actuals. So now when we get these, they are then integrated, obviously using dual rights to finance and operations. So initially they are on an actual staging. There is a very important bad job, which is the input from staging, which pulls these actuals from um, the actual staging. And then we get to view them on the integration journal. So in terms of the integration journal, um, this is kind of the only journal that we can talk about. We might have been used to, you know, a project journal, all those capabilities, we, we actually can't create them. So there isn't any. So all we can do is view this integration journal. And what we can also do is apply attributes to it um, uh, before we actually post into our project, before we post against into our project sub ledger and the GL. 
So we also have the ability to redistribute based on financial dimensions and to apply sales tax. Um, there is very limited capabilities around um, you know, corrections because I think because these transactions are mastered from customer engagement, they will need to be corrected there. Not saying after the journal is posted, we still have the ability to do some adjustments, but just be mindful in terms of what you're able to do from an F and O perspective. So obviously once this journal gets posted, that feeds into our project transactions and we can start to view that, yeah, these are the posted um, transactions against this project. And at the back of that, the voucher number, the tax number exchange rates get updated against the actual staging. So now let's have a look at how it all glues together. So this focuses on the project management side and that other half is on the project accounting side. So we spoke about contracts. So you feed into, you know, these are all mastered on the customer engagement side, the contract line, the project itself and the actuals. And then when we start to look at the accounting side, so again, I'm viewing the accounting side as our back office. This is where we start to talk about our cost and revenue profiles. This is where we define <clears throat> how we're actually um, the ledger posting and what estimates uh, profiles we're using in terms of the revenue recognition engine. Our rules is what glues uh, that setup to our project. Um, in terms of our actuals, this journal posting, that's our integration journal posting. Once that's posted, that feeds into our project ledger and also in turn our general ledger. So this is how it all pieces together. But one thing to also be mindful of is that we've got the capabilities around uh, splitting time into different periods. So it's a, a setup in um, the PMA parameters where you can actually define whether you want that split to be daily, monthly. So that's a cool capability, which I think um, we many people would leverage off um, in terms of trying to bucket their time into the right periods. So something to uh, look out for from a finance and operations side. Let's touch on the invoicing. So from an invoicing perspective, again, this is a one way from customer engagement to finance and operations. So uh, once these are confirmed, it will create an invoice proposal header. So for anything that relates to unbilled sales transactions, be mindful that these have got to be posted. So this is what needs to be posted um, on our actuals. So that would then need to be pulled from our actual stagings to create um, our project proposal lines. So sometimes you might go in against your invoice proposals and see an invoice proposal header for a zero value. And that probably means that you've got some unbilled sales transactions that must be posted, which will be what will create our lines. So I, there isn't much more. And, you know, as I said, in terms of the billing milestones, these are synced to um, our actuals and they'll create um, our fixed price um, on account as well. So I think there's not much apart from that we can't create um, invoices uh, from a finance and operations side. All of this happens on the customer engagement side. And all we do, all we are able to do is view and make changes to the sales tax, maybe add dimensions, but that's about it. So let's go on to the next one when it comes to our revenue recognition. So on our revenue recognition, I believe we still have a good powerful engine there. Nothing's changed. It sits in finance and operations. Uh, be mindful that uh, once the milestone is integrated across onto um, the FNO side, that will create um, an estimate for us, but that's from a fixed price perspective. Other than that, I would say for time and material, we still have capabilities around cost and revenue recognition connected. A revenue can op be optionally accrued at the, the, the time of posting or at invoicing. And we still have capabilities around reversing that accrued revenue at the time of invoicing. So that's good, everything's intact. Now let's go to our fixed price. When it comes to our fixed price, the cost and revenue recognition is separate. So we still have that. And you can also recognize um, revenue at the time of invoicing. Plus, we can also use the periodic functions of either doing it at complete at, at a completed contract or a percentage complete based on the completed task. So that's kind of where we are in terms of the revenue. I don't believe there's much change. I guess be mindful that where we previously had these set up against um, in terms of the ledger and estimate setting, we had it against the project group. This now actually sits against what we call our project cost and uh, revenue profiles. And what glues it together to the project is uh, project cost and revenue 
profile rules. I think it's called profile rules. So now what we're going to do is we are going to just go and um, have a feel, see what it looks like from a finance and operation um, perspective. So if you bear with me while I just share my finance and operations screen, and um, I'm just going to refresh my screen for a minute here. And I also want to refresh this one here. So I'm just conscious of time as well. So it's going to be a very high level overview. So what I want to take you through is yes, if you navigate to project management and accounting. So this is what you're able to see. This is what it looks like. I've you know, highlighted a few favorites, so ignore that. But you can see it's a little bit, it's so much more tidy and friendly uh, UI as compared to classic PMA. So I've just got a legal entity here where classic PMA is enabled. So, oops, so this is my favorites. Give me a second while I quickly go to it just to show you the difference in terms of look at that, look at how busy all of that is compared to that. So big difference. So now let's quickly go into, uh, uh, this is where we still, you know, in terms of our projects, uh, as I said, we still have the capabilities in terms of um, showing our default accounting. So for me, this is key because this is where we can define our project group. We can define our sales tax group, and we can also define our, our financial dimensions. One thing to be mindful about though, is that we are not able to, if you had resource, you know, in classic PMA, we could define some dimensions against our resources and then therefore analyze or report against, you know, our revenue cost based on say the dimensions against the resource, an example being a cost center. Well, we don't have that capability now. When someone does a time entry, when that comes across onto the finance and operations side, it's not going to say, okay, this person belongs to this cost center. So there's a gap there. So just be mindful and maybe look to doing some enhancements uh, and you know just look out for Microsoft's roadmap as well. So back to the project, in terms of what we else we can uh, see, we can still see the plan in terms of our forecasts. We are able to see that. From a managed perspective, I guess we can see in terms of the processes, if it was a fixed price, you would have these enabled. In a case here, in terms of the bill, we're just able to see our invoice proposals and invoice journals. And we can also see the related information such as your pending transactions, posted transaction. From a control, we can see a statement and a cash flow. So the key thing here for me is this related information in terms of defining um, the project. So that it's very similar when it comes to um, the project contract. So similar where we're able to define our dimensions. Now let's quickly go into uh, the fixed price revenue estimate projects. So again, this is at the back of you know, our milestones that will come and create this. In terms of the capabilities, nothing's changed. We can still come in here and create something new. You can see I've got one posted here. We can still do the reverse. We can still do the eliminate. So nothing's changed from that engine. So the only thing I would say be mindful of is when we come to this uh, project cost and revenue profiles, so if I open that quickly, this is where we now define our ledger setup in terms of whether it's going to profit uh, uh, PL account or balance. Um, and this is where we also define in terms of what the system to, should do from a revenue recognition perspective. So all that's still there previously, it was against the group. So just be mindful. And in terms of how that's glued together, uh, just, look out for what we call the project cost and revenue rule. So this is what you know uh, says, okay, for this fixed price or this time and material for a contract relation, use this uh, profile. So that's what glues it together. And then when it comes to our invoice proposals, as I said, there's, you know, uh, this is mastered from a customer engagement. We can't actually create. So you can see there's no create button. You can see your totals. You can see sales tax. If it's still in proposal, some of these are, probably all invoiced. So if it's still in proposal, this one is an example where I can see a zero value. So that means the systems created the header, but the lines haven't come across. So we probably have some unbuilt that still need to be pushed across. We can actually change the tax when it's still not posted. We can actually um, adjust, uh, you know, make changes to the dimensions against this invoices before they get posted. 
so that's just be mindful that those are the only things that I think we can do from an um, invoicing uh, perspective. We can't create them as on the customer engagement side. So we spoke about uh, the integration um, journal. Um, so let's just see, this is it, our project operations integration journal. So if I just click on the lines for this one, so this is what pulls from our actual staging. So all the time entry, expense entry, as you can see, that's a travel expense. This is ours. So if I said edit here, I can't change anything here. I can't change this four hours. I can't do anything. I just have to post it. But what I can do, though, is I can, you know, view accounting. Let's just see whether that will let me do something here. So here is where I'm actually able to actually come here and say, well, this needs to post against this um, dimension or department or project. So this is where you can start to apply your attributes when it comes to that. You can also come and, um, so if I go back one step, uh, so you can also make changes to your tax, you know, your tax group and your item sales tax. So these are the things that we're able to do um, and distribute amounts. Um, so sorry, uh, distribute in terms of our, our financial dimension. So we can do that, but nothing else. And it's just then posting it. And if then any changes need to be done, it's either corrections from a, a CE perspective or we do some adjustments from an FNO. So that's, you know, largely around the integration um, journal. And what's another important element is this import from staging. So this is what pushes our transactions from the actual staging onto our integration journal. My recommendation is just have this set to a batch continually running. There's nothing different in terms of our, we still have project groups, but I don't think, I think they're more significant from a reporting perspective. Uh, in terms of our uh, ledger posting, nothing has changed. We touched on the transaction categories. So this is where they come and um, a default into FNO. But I think of importance to you would probably be the creation of these project categories. So this is one of the very few places where you can actually see a new button on the finance and operations side. So here you would just say, okay, this is what I want to do. I don't actually want to create anything at the moment. So I'm just going to delete that. But that is what we've got from a finance and operation perspective um, and just being mindful of time I don't think there's anything else key, but it's just interesting to see how much tidy and good it looks um, as compared to classic PMA. So now what we will do is we will quickly go back in terms of our slide deck and finish off uh, our very last um, um, slide, which is really on in terms of our key considerations. So. I just want to give a few um, in terms of data. So I would just say plan plan your, uh, your data migration um, side of it. Pay attention to if you've got any needs around API and data load. Um, consider, you know, in terms of your gold build strategy, because this is across two platforms. And these considerations are more from a, uh, a deployment, which is uh, across the both platforms. In terms of environments, ensure environments are in sync when copying uh, environments around. Um, obviously, ensure dual rights is enabled. And also, there's a couple of considerations against around your storage capacity when uh, planning your strategy. Licensing, check the licensing requirements, ensure you have the right mix uh, base. Uh, also, consider if there's other D365 products that are form, form part of your solution. And when it comes to enhancements and roadmaps, I would just say always cross-reference with Microsoft before you go into making any changes. So I think in terms of our presentation for today, we will leave it at that. There's many topics, which are certainly topics for another day, but we will leave it at that. Just note that this session will be uploaded to YouTube within 14 days. Um, and uh, let's take your questions. Thank you.